Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Blitz section of the Paris Rapid and Blitz tournament. It's Alireza Firuja versus Wesley So uh, and a lot of you have suggested this game for good reasons uh, if I might add and it's uh, very very interesting because uh, the, the lower the time format gets uh, the deadlier Alireza gets uh, but this game uh, it's just uh, super complicated and well. A uh, few people uh, thrive in complicated positions, uh, much like Wesley So here, the, the world chess champion of the Fisher Random uh, uh, chess variant. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out as it's uh, it's quite a beauty. So here Alireza opens with d4. We have knight to a 6 by Wesley and bishop to g5. Alireza goes for the Tromposki attack. And as you'll see uh, for, the, uh, for the first couple of moves, the game will be following uh, the first World Chess Championship uh, match game between uh, Carlsen and Kayak, and that was played in New York in 2016. So d5 and now e3. Uh, we have c5 now striking in the center uh, and the bishop captures an f6. We have g captures an f6, now ruining the pawn structure a bit, but you will get uh, a, a very strong pawn center. Uh, at some point when e6 is played. So d captures on c5, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. We have e6 now, and c4. Now uh, Alireza strikes uh, in, in the center, he goes for that d5 pawn. We have d captures on c5, uh, on c4, uh, Wesley says, all right, if you are interested, we can trade queens, but now knight to d2. Alireza wants to keep the queens on the board. We have bishop captures on c5, and now knight g2 f3, ready to, to castle king's side. Uh, and here in the World Chess Championship match game, uh, in, the, in the first one in the 2016, Karakin Castle here, that game ended in a draw. It was, the I think, the longest game of the championship, lasted like o almost seven hours, uh, where Magnus uh, got some winning chances, but in the end he couldn't pull it off. Uh, but here... Um, Wesley does not follow in Karakin's steps, he plays c3, and already yeah, it's a very, very interesting position, because now he gives back the pawn this way, instead of allowing bishop or knight captures on c4 at some point, uh, and uh, he will ruin white's structure, uh, white's pawn structure somewhat. So here, b captures on c3, and there is one game also from 2021 where a6 was played, uh, but uh, here we just have castles, oh uh, sorry, castles by Wesley, uh, and it is now uh, already as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how Wesley will uh, keep his king safe as it is uh, somewhat open uh, and this is a very very fast game. So here we have castles by Alireza uh, and now f5. Uh, preventing this knight from, from going to e4. Now the queen can also enter the game via g5, h4, f6, or uh, depending on what white plays. So here, knight to d4, the pawn on c3 will now add additional support to this knight, and bishop to d7. We have rook to b1, now putting pressure on that b7 pawn if the bishop ever moves, uh, and now rook to c8. And this is already a very tricky position. Uh, if Wesley's not careful, play something like, let's say, queen to h4, uh, there's, uh, e even though there are two pieces in front of your queen and Wesley's bishop, uh, it's still not enough because here white can just capture on f5 and after e captures knight b3 and now the, the bishop on c5 is undefended and the bishop on d7 is undefended and white would get uh, a great position here. So Wesley keeps the queen on d8, guarding that bishop. We have rook to c8, it just continues development. Uh, and now queen to h5 by Alireza. So now the queen is uh, uh, on the attacking side, but how can uh, the other pieces join? Well, it's uh, quite simple. If this knight can come to f3, uh, f3 and g5, could be very unpleasant for Wesley's king. So he goes queen to f6 right away. He now uh, he's, uh, uh, he, he claims that his pawn structure is somewhat better. He does have the bishop pair, so he can just play queen to g6 and offer a queen trade so you never have to worry about knight f3 because just queen g6 so here we have rook f to d1 and now queen g6 uh going for that queen trade right away we have queen back to e2 of course alireza does not want to trade and rook f to d8 now getting uh the uh, the last rook activated we have knight 2 to f3 uh, and now comes queen back to f6 so you don't have to worry about any knight jumps and if uh, this knight for uh, ever moves you can always just pick up the c3 pawn so here we have e4, and this is a position where you could have uh, tried something else. Let's say if Alireza wanted a quiet game, uh, he could have just, for example, traded here. Knight captures bishop, captures bishop, captures b, captures, and then play some like queen c4. We attack the bishop, bishop has to move. Then, for example, we can activate the rooks and so on. It's a very nice position for white. Uh, but Alireza decides to complicate things, and like I said, uh, Wesley is a world Fisher random championship. No one uh, thrives in complicated positions as much uh, as much as he does. 
so here after e4, we have bishop back to b6. He says, all right, this is not a problem. I'm just going to uh, get my bishop here where it's nicely defended, and I don't have to worry about my b7 pawn hanging at any point. So here, e captures on f5, and now knight captures on d4 by Wesley. Uh, c captures on d4, and the queen captures on f5. And now bishop to d3, attacking Wesley's queen. Wesley just moves back, and now queen to e4. And it seems like Alireza got his attack. Maybe he can somehow bring the rooks into the into the attack also uh, doesn't seem very likely but uh, if uh, you know uh, this is already looking very nice and now how many of you would if you see this position just defend the pawn or something like this but not Wesley Wesley just plays h6 and he says uh, yeah you're, you're welcome to come to h7 there there is nothing waiting for you there uh, and indeed if if you go queen to h7 check king f8 what do you play here? There is really nothing. If you go knight to e5, then just bishop to a4. Attack the rook. There's a double attack on this pawn here. You're going to lose it. Uh, then the knight could fall. It's just a, a lost position for white. So instead, uh, after this h6 move, we have queen to g4 check by Alireza. Queen to g7. Again, Wesley says, yes, I'm very, very happy with uh, with uh, my uh, uh, endgame setup. So let's exchange queens. And of course, Alireza declines. Just queen back to h4. You have to be careful if you do some sort of a rook lift, uh, then this rook might uh, hang. Not, for, not now because the bishop nicely defends it. Uh, but, you know, always... Uh, uh, check out if something is hanging so here bishop to a4 he goes after the rook here and now there's a triple attack on this pawn and now uh, not a lot of ways for for alireza to defend this here alireza plays rook to e1 uh, he could have uh, he could have kept defending it with something like rook to d2, but I think he was just afraid of uh, the, the the bishop pair harassing the rooks. Uh, and now, of course, you cannot capture this because at the end of the line there's a bishop h7 check and the rook captures on d4. So you know, you will definitely hang something. So instead, after bishop to a4, Alireza just goes rook to e1. He wants to give up this pawn and then uh, get get a nice attack going. And Wesley says thank you very much. Bishop captures on g uh, on d4. Uh, we have rook to e4 now with a triple attack on Wesley's bishop and also what happens if queen to g4. Wesley will just lose the queen. But Wesley says not a problem. Just bishop to f6 attacking white's queen. And now of course this does nothing because you will happily trade and grab the rook. And not only that the bishop on d3 will be hanging as well at the end of this line. Just captures captures and then we pick up the bishop too. And now we're just up a whole rook. So uh, after bishop to f6, we have queen to h3, getting the queen out of the way, still hoping for some bishop, uh, rook to g4 action. But now rook captures on d3. It's not a peace sacrifice. You will win back the peace with rook captures on uh, a4. But first rook to g4. We have bishop to g5 and now rook captures on a4. And it seems like uh, Alireza did a fine job here. Uh, he got uh, something something going on. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the position is completely lost for Alireza. And there's even a beautiful move for Wesley here that he found in a, in a Blitz game. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this uh, super impressive move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on looking for very nice moves. But for those of you who found the exact one, and that one is queen to b2, uh, congratulations, because this is the good stuff and you are a most impressive player. So queen to b2, just uh, boldly offering uh, the queen like that. Uh, and the queen cannot be captured. The weaknesses of the back rank are being felt. If you capture, then just rook d1 check. You have to block and then rook capture sunny one will be checkmate. So instead, after queen to b2, to rook to f1 was played but now wesley uh, executes this perfectly rook to c1 uh, and again you can't just play anything here if, if you let's say play rook captures on a7 uh, it's again a forced checkmate rook captures on f1 king captures rook to d1 check you have to block 91 now just uh, queen to b5 check and now the king has to move away from the defense of the knight and this will just be checkmate so after rook to c1 alireza played g4 an ugly move to play but what are you going to do you have to create some breathing room for the king but still uh, wesley just plays rook captures king captures and now another beauty 
or queen to b5 now with an attack on this rook and here you just have to give up this rook because there's nothing for you to play uh, if you move the rook then you all sorts of nasty discoveries become possible for example rook to e4 we're just going to capture the knight with a discovery and that's it uh, after king g2 we're going to capture the queen king captures on h3 uh, and that's it and uh, there's even a force made in in nine for those of you who enjoy when i finished uh, when i finish already one positions i'm going to show it to you because it's super interesting queen f1 check king g3 queen to g1 check king f3 now queen to h1 check look at the queen and bishop doing good work here and uh, now you have to move away from the defense of the rook, rook uh, king has to move queen captures here king f1 and now just queen f3 threatening bishop here and checkmate so you're gonna have to move but now bishop h4 and that's it you will you will get checkmated here h3 bishop captures king here check here and uh, queen to g1 checkmate uh seems odd finishing an already winning uh, game but i know most of you enjoy it so there you have it uh but yeah uh, it was in this position that Alireza resigned the game and what an incredible victory for Wesley So who just uh, he just uh, he, he got a he didn't get a better position maybe it was just a more of an active position a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a better pawn structure and the bishop pair uh, and then he constantly kept uh, kept offering a queen trade uh, Alireza kept declining and then he went into you know um, a crazy position against Wesley and that's something no one can do so uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Wesley still leading the tournament. So he was leading the tournament after the three days of Rapid. And now he's also leading after the first day of Blitz. And it seems like Wesley is unstoppable in all-time formats. And uh, a lot of you are saying in the comments that he would also be a most worthy adversary for Magnus in November. Uh, but that will have to wait. We'll see uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in the, in the next candidate cycle. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Abdul Aziz Abdul Ghani, uh, James O'Toole, uh, Philosophical Questions YouTube, Eric Labelle, and Alexander Williamson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this very nice tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.